Let the war games begin. Welcome everyone to NXT War Games and we jump straight into the women's war games matches. Team Roxanne Perez led by the NXT Women's Champion herself leads a team of newbies. A young team full of life like Sol Ruka. Not as experienced ladies like Nikita Lyons but what they all have in common is their need for revenge on the other team. And there's also Tiffany Stratton who was a last minute request by Roxanne for finding out it was 4 on 4. Tiff didn't want to do it but here we are and wait a minute it looks like Roxanne was gonna enter first but Sol Ruka stepped up well Sol has some guts on her I'll tell you that she is bald for doing this but she will go the entire distance in this match as they face the submission regime of Zoe Stark a turncoat who was on Roxanne's side until a few weeks back when she lost to Asuka but decided to join her along with Shayna Baszler a Raw superstar who joined Asuka's team by helping Zoe Stark win the advantage ladder match out of nowhere they also have Nikki Cross, a woman who's been stalking in the background for weeks now and declared war games on the other team. She's absolutely mental, but their leader is the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. She has full focus on the NXT Women's Championship, but first up is war games, and they'll be sending out Zoe Stark first, and I like this choice. She can easily run the entire way, and she's way more experienced than Soul. but let's get the games underway. The war games have begun. Zoe Stark and Sol Ruka on separate sides and we have the teams locked in their cages. Every one minute we will have someone else and Sol Ruka went to the other ring immediately. Sol Ruka's got some fire at her. Immediately with a shoulder tackle. Another shoulder tackle. She's channeling her inner John Cena here. The arm dragon. Now another shoulder tackle. And oh god Zoe Stark. Look at this neck breaker. We're going to get a one on one match here for a bit now. And look at this off the turnbuckles with a crossbody. Whoa, went for something there. But Sol Ruka with a draw with a drop with a drop kick into the corner. Send her from corner to corner. A shotgun drop kick into the turnbuckles. Up on the top rope she goes. Moon song from Sol Ruka. And a wall went for a springboard. But Zoe! What a kick. But wait, Sol Ruka is gonna send her from one ring to the other. Double springboard to the other ring. Oh my god, Sol Ruka is crazy. But Zoe Stark on the attack, and we're gonna get our second entry in this match and the advantage won by Zoe Stark means that Nikki Cross is gonna be the first member to come out of the cages here comes Nikki Cross and oh no she's gonna grab some weapons Nikki Cross has a table I should have expected something like this from Nikki she grabbed the table and it looks like she's not done she's grabbing a stop sign where'd she get the stop sign from and now wait a minute a chair She's grabbing all the weapons she possibly can before entering this match. Nikki Cross coming in with a flurry, setting that one up in the corner. Now she's got the chair going to the other ring where Sol and Zoe are. Sol's got a, got a little face buster on Zoe, but oh my god, the chair right to the back into the head. Sol didn't see any of it coming. And now Zoe Stark with a Luthez press on Sol Ruka. And now Nikki Cross and Zoe Stark have the advantage. Now where is Nikki going? Nikki, where are you going? Nikki Cross is on top of the cage. And now Zoe's got Soul Z360. And now Nikki Cross up on the top of the cage. Oh my god! Diving from the top. And now Soul Ruka still fighting on. Standing Spanish fly. But wait a minute, Zoe Stark with that drop kick. And now it looks a two on one advantage. But maybe, just maybe, we're going to get our next entry. Even up the odds here for Team Roxanne. And it's going to be Nikita Lyons, the powerhouse of the team, entering in second to help Sol Ruka, one of the more inexperienced on the team. But you know what? It's going to work for now. Nikki Cross gets sent to the table she put up. She put up that table. Oh, my. And now we got Nikki Cross and Zoe Stark back on the attack. Nikki and Nikita going at it. Sol Ruka and Zoe Stark still going at it on separate sides of the rings. Nikita Lyons is doing leapfrogs and such. Oh, God. But Zoe Stark, no wait, again, has sold for another Z360. She can't pin anybody, but oh my. And now Nikita Lyons and Nikki Cross with that knee right to the face. And now wait a minute, Soul trying to get away from Zoe Stark, but here we go. Irish whip off the ropes, ducking under, going for a leapfrog. Zoe still running from rope to rope, a hurricane Rana from Soul Ruka. And now wait, Nikki got Nikita hung up on the ropes here. Oh my, oh, turn her inside out. And now again, this time without the ropes. 
And now look at this, stomping away on Nikita, but Sol Ruka got these punches and bunches to Zoe Stark. Again? Again, Nikki? Not a second time! Nikita, watch out! A second jump from the top! And we're gonna get another person in this match from Team Asuka, and it looks like it's gonna be Shayna Baszler, the submission magician, meaning Asuka will come in last for her team. And it's gonna be a three-on-two advantage. And Shayna's got sledgehammers. Shayna's gonna grab more weapons. Another stop sign. Why do we need more stop signs? I thought we were done with one. And now Shayna Baszler, a kendo stick, grabbing everything and the kitchen sink from under there. And now she's got the sledgehammer going over to the other ring. Oh wait, Soul ran right into her. And now Nikita, or Nikki, got her up on the ropes there. And oh, whoa, went for the sledgehammer shot, but she gets it eventually. I think Soul Rook is doing handsprings over there. Nikita and Shayna going at it. Nikki got taken down. Oh! Kendo stick, Shayna's going crazy with these weapons immediately. Oh god, chill, chill on Nikita. And now stop sign, boy, she gets right up to her feet, kips up right into the stop sign. Shot just threw it at her. Zoe's climbing from ring to ring for no damn reason. More sledgehammer shots. Oh my god, Zoe landed on her. This is insanity, but we're gonna even it up at three on three. You're next, right? Ew, no, I don't even want to be here. You're lucky I'm even doing this. You go. Fine. And it looks like Roxanne Perez is going to have to take one for the team. The NXT Women's Champions next in this match, meaning Tiffany Stratton will be the last person in this match. But Ni Roxanne, I almost said Nikita. Roxanne's grabbing tables. More tables. Two tables from Roxanne Perez. She's not playing around the NXT Women's Champion. And now it's now eventually, eventually entered the ring. Oh God, I'm messing up a little bit, but it's all right. Shayna Baszler immediately meeting her. And oh no, the Carafuna clutch. The Carafuna clutch locked in on Roxanne Perez. Oh no, Roxanne, she can tap out all she wants. She can pass out all she wants, but it won't end the match and there's nobody there to help her so she just lets her go that's crazy sending her into the cage the wait Sol Ruka she's not gonna back down from Shayna Baszler surprisingly it seems like you would oh double springboard but no Shayna goes to the other and Sol turns around and does a quadruple springboard what are we doing Nikita missed her split-legged moons not moons off but leg drop it just kicked the shit out of Nikita Lyons or Nikki Cross I don't know, but the last person from the submission regime, Team Asuka, gets the captain, the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship, and she's grabbing tables, more tables. We have four tables in this match, and Asuka has officially entered. And now she's going after Nikita Lyons, and oh, an abdominal stretch, a little Black Widow here. Shout out AJ Lee, got her locked in. Nikita Lyons has nowhere she could possibly go. Wait, Soruka breaks it up, but gets a slap in the face. And now wait a minute. A triangle choke, a triangle choke here from Asuka, a second submission hold locked in on one of her teammates, on the other team, and now Roxanne Perez breaks that one up, but look at this, the Asuka lock, the Asuka lock locked in on Roxanne Perez, oh god, every single member is catching these submissions, except for Tiffany, because she's the last one, wait a minute, Roxanne, Roxanne broke out of it, oh my god, I can't believe it, Pop Rocks, Pop Rocks on Asuka, and now, we're gonna get our last person in this match. It's four on three, but make it four on four. Tiffany Stratton doesn't wanna be here, but she's gonna want, to, she's gonna have to. Tiffany Stratton, and now wait a minute. She, she's taking her sweet ass time, but she gets in. The match has officially begun. Anyone can win, and Tiffany Stratton is surrounded. Tiffany's gonna climb the cage. She's gonna try to escape out of here. She gets out of dodge for now. And oh no, Shayna Baszler's gonna take out. Oh, Roxanne with Sol Ruka. Sol Ruka stopped her from going through the table. And now look at this suplex on Shayna through the table. Roxanne puts Zoe up there. P.M.E. through the table. The prettiest moves all ever. N Nikki Cross is still up there. Nikki Cro Nikita Lyons is up there with her. What is this? And now she throws her off the cage. And Asuka, she's trying to break it up, but she can't. They're blocking her. Tiffany Stratton stole the pin. She stole the cover. Asuka can try all she wants, but they win. Oh my God. Team Roxanne Perez actually did it. The newbies managed to win the War Games match. They were smart about it. They kept Asuka at bay knowing she was the biggest threat in the match. Well, the NXT Women's Champion proves to be a good leader, but Tiffany got the pin. That's very interesting.
What? Rick Boogs just got launched off the railing backstage. Who did this? Why did this? What does this mean for the War Games match later tonight? He needs some medical attention. Now we have some non-War Games matches. First, a triple threat match for the North American Championship with Dragon Lee opening up after finding his way into the match along with Axiom, a man who has a count-out victory over the current champion and has been fiending for a rematch with the champion, J.D. McDonough. He won it at stand and deliver and looks to keep it forever. So put it up for grabs, baby. Yes. Just... Yes, Dragon Lee and Axiom already going at it, but wait, a Hurricane Rana on JD McDonough trying to steal it immediately? No, only a one count and a drop kick from Axiom. Dragon sends him off the ropes, though. Oh, I don't even know what that is. And now look at this, he's got him in an arm bar. JD McDonough doesn't realize it, now he's got to break it up. I think Axiom got out of it anyway. Look at this, tilting on his head. He's tilting on his head, what is going on here? We're catching him for a dragon screw. They're all just going at it, what a neat Axiom. But JD got him up here for an Alabama slam. And now, whoa, went for a German suplex, but JD gets out of it. Here we go, double underhook, Tyler Driver, shout out Tyler Bate. And now Dragon Lee and JD McDonough going at it on the outside as Axiom watches on. Oh, went for the head <laughs> What is going on here? But no. Oh wait, Duck's under for that German suplex. And now Tilt a whirling around here. But JD got him up on his shoulders. Look at this. Rolling through. Okay. And now look at this. Hurricane Ron on Dragon Lee. Axiom sends him all the way over there. Sends him down there. What is going on? Duck's the chop. And he catches his leg there. Got him up for a back suplex. And now Dragon Lee has JD for a Saito suplex. Went for a German on Axiom, but he rolls through here. Gets out of it. And now a Northern Lights on JD. Went for a half and half suplex. He connects. And now Dragon Lee with the Hurricane Rana, though. Oh, went for a standing Spanish fly. But look at the elbows right to the mask of Axiom. JD sends Dragon right back in. But a Dragon suplex to JD. Now in the ring, Axiom goes. Golden Ratio. Golden ratio out of nowhere, but JD's in the ring, and he's able to break it up, and a kick sends him down, and now look at this, tearing apart the limbs as he always does, wait, headbutt, pulling devil inside, devil inside, but I think Axiom got up to his feet, it doesn't matter, he was stunned, but Dragon Lee's able to kick out anyway, Dragon Lee has a bat, JD with the double foot stomp, German from Axiom, Big knee to the face to Dragon Lee. But now off the middle rope, Tornado DDT. But Dragon has got JD up. What is this? Uh, last ride. Oh, went for the bat shot to Axiom, but he catches him, takes him down. But now JD, he's got an abdominal stretch, but no, Dragon Lee gets out of it. Suplex into a power bomb. But Axiom is able to steal the pin from Dragon Lee. Cover. No, JD kicks out to save his title reign. And now Axiom's got JD in the corner as Dragon Lee watches on for a satellite DDT busted him open all oh, went for a half and half suplex but Dragon Lee able to arm drag him over no way Axiom back and forth these two go JD's back in back in the fray here and now he's got him off the Alabama slam again but Axiom's able to get out of it a little German suplex hold there takes him down but a German from Dragon into a bridging cover but he kicks out at one baseball bat to JD standing to shooting star but no and now Dragon Lee's got him up oh, what, what is this crunching him like that oh my now he's out of the picture you're going for that suplex powerbomb, but JD gets out of it, and now into, oh my god, a poison Rana, inverted Frankenstein, and Axiom, he's got a submission hold on Dragon Lee, but JD's back in the ring, and he's able to break it up to save his title reign again, backstabber, and now, look at this, headbutt, Dragon Lee's out of it, devil inside, cover, Dragon Lee nowhere to be seen, and Axiom kicked out, Axiom kicked out, and now, wait a minute, Ducks under, Pele kick, he tried to use the sledgehammer, golden ratio, golden ratio again, but JD's able to break it up immediately, golden ratio to JD, back to back, Dragon's out on his feet, he's not even on his feet, and JD kicks out. Oh my god, and now we're down to t the two challengers, but JD's getting up to his feet, I think he's gonna grab some more weapons, and now Dragon Lee and Axiom squaring off in the middle of the ring, shades of what happened on NXT, wait, he gets up to his feet and meets a headbutt, devil inside, Axiom's out on his feet, cover, and JD retains, JD McDonough pulls it off, he retains the North American Championship despite the disadvantage, and I honestly don't believe it, I was fully expecting JD to not be involved in losing his title, but what? a match wait what who's this this hooded figure has just attacked jd mcdonough our champion is being mugged and now he's on the top rope what is this oh five four 
054 splash on the North American champion. That's Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali is in NXT. What is going on here? I was going to ask why he's here, but it seems very clear what his intentions are. Now we have a breakouts tournament qualifying match, the only one of its kind. This is Amir, the guy who beat Andre Chase at Stand and Deliver to secure his spot in the 2K23 division. But now he has a chance to make the tournament when he faces Mason Meltzer, the son of the owner of his company, and the SmackDown GM Rilo Meltzer, who is in his corner. And this nepotism baby has been handed everything, but this he has to earn. Who qualifies? This is the first time we get to see Mason Meltzer in action, so hopefully Rilo did a good job training him. Oh my god, Amir. But I knee right to the back, and Mason Meltzer taking control early on in this match. But wait a minute, Amir went for that clothesline. He ducked under. And look at this, crunching him up here. Oh my, breaking his neck. But we're back on this with Amir with that kick right to the face. And I look at these curb stops to Meltzer. Now look at this, sling blade, roll through. Drop kick to the side of the head. Mason's got to get all the way out of there. But Amir, look at this. Confident as ever. He's already picked up wins over people on the roster. Went for a trust fall. But he moved out of the way. But we're going to be bouncing up and around this ring. But he went for the Kamigoye but got caught. Look at these kicks from Mason. Oh, no. And look at this. Popping him up into a little punch there. Ripcord. Big forearm to the face. Now, here we go. Sending him out to the outside on the apron. But he able to dodge that. Oh, my God. A phenomenal forearm. Hello, AJ. And now, look at this. Dropping him onto his foot and now sends him off with his legs there here we go no went for a big chop but gets sent out there with an arm drag mason Meltzer now back on the attack back and forth these two go from the corner and out of it and now look at these punches and bunches onto the floor the ground and pound look at these kicks right to the midsection of amir big punch to the face no wait amir sends him up onto the ropes he goes big knee as he's hung up there mason uh, trying to get out of this again but amir's able to join him but gets caught with that kick that he's felt before and now Mason, no way, went for a kick, drops him down there, whoa, went for a big pounce, but Meltzer, big kick like Amir did earlier, now springboard forearm, look at this, half and half, no, backbreaker, cover on Amir, that could do it, and no, Amir's able to kick out, no, he was calling for something there, he was calling, he was taunting, but it may come back to bite him in the ass, last shot, oh my, a knee right to the back of the head, cover on Mason, and no, Mason's able to kick out. I don't know, man. This might be a little tough here. Oh, Phoenix Splash! Cover! And Mason is able to get out of it again. Amir calling him up one more time for that last shot. No way he caught his leg. Here we go. Flipping him up. Knee to the face. He turned him inside out. And I went for that backbreaker again. But Amir able to take him out. Pounce! Oh, my! Double underhook. Pedigree. Kick right to the knee. He's got him down. Called up for that knee again. No, Meltzer ducked it. Big kick to the face. And now Irish whip off the ropes. Popping him up into that kick. Look at these combinations from Meltzer. Went for a, a little clothesline there but gets sent over the top rope on the outside they go and now look at this he's got him no Meltzer's able to send him off big kick again no he missed this one rip cord Larry it's all turning him inside out now went for that kick again but it's not gonna work and now Meltzer's got him in for Canadian Destroyer oh no and now look at this off the bottom rope with a poison rana oh viscous elbow and now look at this caught him turn him oh Dropping him all the way down cover, but no, Amir grabs the ropes. Mason can't believe it. That's the inexperience right there. Now kick to the knee again. Going for one more time. That big knee again. Cover. And Amir does it. Amir has done it again, moving up to 2-0 in his record. He beats Mason Meltzer and has put himself the first of eight to be in the breakouts tournament whenever that may be. Now we have a match between heated rivals as Apollo Crews, notably without Dabakato in his corner, has his second match back since returning to NXT and has no easy task when he squares off against the mad Russian Ilya Dragunov, a man who is on a warpath to the NXT World Championship, but the man who sent a roadblock was Apollo Crews and he vows to run straight through him, so let's get it on. 
This might be the only match on the card without like a stake or a standard on the line, but hey, we're okay here, and it looks like it's gonna be a banger. Now Ilya Dragunov taking Apollo into the corner, and now immediately coming out with a flurry. This man doesn't have an off button. This man doesn't stop, and now again, we got more clotheslines from corner to corner, multiple times, and now, whoa, went for the choppy ducks, but Apollo gets caught with a knee, no, not a knee, a DDT, and now look at these sentons, went for three, but Apollo got him up on his shoulders here, running Death Valley driver and now picking him up from the floor look at the strength of this man with a power slam and now wow he can, he's got strength but he can definitely move he can definitely fly and now look at this back oh big pump kick road kick style went for the enziguri but Ilya Dra Dragunov sends him off the ropes but no Apollo Cruz with that super kick popping him up into a Samoan drop from corner to the Irish whip tour of the islands Oh no, and look at this German suplex. Wait a minute, he's looking to take Ilya Dragon up to Suplex City. Okay, Apollo, a trifecta of German suplexes. But no, he's able to get him up. The Dragon Screw takes him down, going for that clothesline. But no, Apollo with a swinging neck breaker gets out of it. Up on the top rope. Oh, big splash. No, Ilya. And now here we go. No, Apollo back on the attack. Neck breaker, a running one. And Ilya's got to get out of there. But Apollo joining him on the outside. And now here we go. He's looking to fly again. This man is agile. But wait, Torpedo Moscow out of nowhere. In the ring he goes. Apollo pops right back up. Wait, he's distracting the ref. He's distracting the ref. Dabakato is now attacking Ilya Dragunov as Apollo distracts the ref. He's got a table. Why does he have a table? Look at this. He's got him. Dabakato choke slam through the table on Ilya Dragunov and walks out laying no evidence besides broken table but we're gonna be able to clean that up and the ref didn't see a single thing and apollo's got him in the ring turning him into the power bomb cover and done but Ilya Dragunov able to get out of it and apollo cruz but no that all oh, that big one-handed spine buster a double whammy of, of finishing moves and Dragunov gets out of it again Another kick out. This man doesn't die. There's nothing you can do to break this man. Military press into the standing moonsault. But there's nothing that can break the mad Russian. No matter how many people you have. And now look at this. Calling for the Torpedo Moscow for a second time. He hit the first one on the outside. The second one in the ring. Cover on Apollo. And Cruz kicked out. Ilya Dragunov can't believe that's usually how it ends. They bump into each other. Clothesline over the top rope. Dragunov now going out to the outside. Apollo in position. Sent on to the outside. And now look at this. Constantine special. And now went for that chop. But Apollo chops him right back in Zaguri. And now up on the top rope he goes for a low down splash. And now calling him up for that move again. But no, he gets out of it. Oh, Torpedo. No, he caught him out of the Torpedo. He caught him. And Apollo Crews wins! Apollo Crews pulls it off, doing no small part from the interference a bit ago from Dabakato, wearing Ilya down, but still, I gotta give it to him. Apollo Crews has scored a massive win. This really establishes him in NXT on his career resurgence. Dad, please, I'm sorry. I thought I had him. Please forgive me. Give me another chance, and I got him. You aren't my problem anymore. I have more important things to handle. Ah, so you're the disgruntled child. Oh, Sunshine, you're in for a treat. I'd actually like to introduce you to someone that you might have a little bit in common with, but he's all business. Oh, and now William Regal's son, Charlie Dempsey, is beating the ever loving piss out of Mason Meltzer. Well, now Mason's stuck in the breakouts division for Lord knows how long, and also welcome to NXT, Mr. Dempsey. Now we have a no-holds-barred match, our last match before the other war games, and it sees Alexander Bishop in full war getup as he knows what he's getting himself into tonight against the Hellraiser, Cody Hagen, and oh my god in heaven, he is ready for this match. He claims the king would be dead after he's done with him, and with this entrance, you can only imagine the mindset he has coming into this. Oh my, let's get it started, I can't wait.
Nothing like some good old stipulations and immediately ducking a clothesline, a German suplex, and now we're already gonna grab some weapons, a kendo stick, but Hagen has steel steps, and he hits Alexander Bishop in the back with him, sending him into the railing, but no, we're dodging and weaving, sling blade into the drop kick right to the mask. I don't know why Cody Hagen's wearing a mask tonight, but this is how crazy he's taking this. Look at this, oh! Little back suplex there, and now going in the neck breaker hold. Bishop is feeling himself there. Whoa, big kendo stick shot, but no, Cody rolls out of the way. Oh, into the ropes we go. Big knee to the face, and now slamming his head up and down the mat. There's a huge size difference in this match, spinning Uranagi. And now look at this mounting Bishop, and oh no. Look at these elbows, these forearms right to Alexander. That cannot feel good, but he's gonna get, roll out of the ring. Look at this, look at the prowess, the ring awareness of Alexander Bishop now grabbing at the arms, grabbing at the wrists, kicking right to them big old tattoos. Now look at this, just manhandling him by the arm. Oh no, he's gonna grab the other one, not the phalanges. Don't grab the fingies, oh no. Stretch him out. Now look at this double knee. Oh god, neck breaking him there. And no way Cody gets out of it. Got him up. Look at this. Perfect play. Oh! Little brain buster. But Bishop! What a knee. But Hagen sends him off. There's a steel step waiting to be used. Pile driver. Oh, and using the steel step. Oh, but a discus elbow. Bishop catches him. He caught him off guard, and Hagen's got to go to the outside, but he's going to join him with that forearm. And now look at this, ducking under German suplex. Got him, dropping him down there with a flat liner. And now dropping the steel steps onto his head. Oh, jeez, super kick. Oh, and now we're going all the way up on the stage. What is going on here? Kamigoye. And now look at this, got him. Oh, what a elbow. That was like a hidden blade. Oh, deep six from Cody Haken, and now he's back on the attack here. Oh, what a suplex. And now got him with the punches and bunches on the ground there. This gotta end in the ring, but I don't think they want to. I think they're gonna battle it out on the stage, battle on the ramp for as long as they possibly can. Now look at this, Bishop taunting to the crowd. Oh, the disrespectfulness, but Hagen still in this. No Bishop, they're fighting on oh, super kick, and Bishop falls to the ground with them. They are taken out of each other right now. They are so fatigued, but now Hagen's gonna send him towards the ring. We're getting back in the ring here. It's gotta end here. Wait, what? Oh, spike? A spike? Cover in the middle of the ring. No, Bishop's able to kick out. Hagen can't believe it went for the kendo stick shot, but Bishop able to use it to his advantage. But no, back and forth, these two go right to the back, and he broke it on him. But no, went for a little scoop slam there. But Bishop, reverse neck breaker. And now he's got him up. Oh, no, turning him into the bitter end. The final verdict almost forgot it and Hagen out up on the top rope he goes feeling froggy and now what gets him out of the corner oh and now a kip up out of it Bishop the swagger the moxie of this man but no he tried to bring the steel steps in but it's not gonna work just threw him with a power bomb and now we got shovels we're looking to bury people poison Rana Oh, we couldn't even use it. No, we have to use the steel steps, but oh, Hagen uses it in the corner. No, Bishop gets out of it. Big knee to the face again. And now, no, wait, we're still going here. Almost caught on the steel steps. Look at this, a little bullplex from Cody Hagen using the steel steps again, but no, Bishop catches him in. He's got him locked in for the guillotine choke. The Bishop's choice. The Bishop's choice locked in. The guillotine choke on Hagen, and he tapped out. He made Hagen tap out. Bishop wins. Alexander Bishop wins the war in the end against Cody Hagen. What an important win. What a valiant effort from both men. But Alexander Bishop now should look towards bigger and better things. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the second annual breakout tournament. Where you send creative superstars to me and I choose eight to put in a completely simulated tournament with some that I like making the breakouts division. We already have one spot filled for the tournament, so I will be taking seven created characters with some more for the division. In order to get yourself involved, you need to be able to stand out. I'm not going to pick you just because I know you, just because I like you. You got to impress me. Tell me their name, their backstory, their gimmick, give their moves names. Names, give them all you want. You don't really have to do it, but it makes it more fun. But most importantly, tell me their tags on community creations and make sure your account settings are right so I can actually see it. There's a channel in my Discord server where I'll be able to see your submissions very easily, or you could just comment on this video and eventually I'll get to seeing it. The winner of this tournament gets a North American Championship match and the runner-up gets put on the main NXT roster. And last year, 
the guy actually won the belt, so anything is possible. More information on the division will be announced when the participants are revealed, which will be on the next NXT episode, so get it to me quick. If you have any further questions, ask me in the comments section, and I'll be sure to answer any of them as soon as I can. Have fun, and I hope to see you break out in NXT. Now it's time for the main event and another War Games match, but Nakamura still doesn't have a full team, but the show must go on, and Grayson Waller opens up for Team Styles. Team pretty phenomenal, a guy who has surprisingly aligned himself with AJ Styles in the recent weeks and has a win over the number one contender, and it looks like he'll start the War Games match, and I gotta like what I'm seeing here. The daredevil of the group goes first. But along with Daredevils, we got Handsome Devils, Pretty Deadly, Yes Boy, Elton Prince, and Kit Wilson were meant to get their NXT Tag Title match, but it was made a triple threat match by their own teammates, but they put their differences aside tonight, along with the phenomenal NXT Champion A. Jay Styles. He hasn't had a defense just yet, but his contenders are all over the place, so it's hard to see what's next for him. But I know what's next is War Games, and the opposing team starts out without Rick Boogs, but the current NXT Tag Team Champion Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, the Dirty Dogs, they'll go at it three on four tonight with their leader of the team, Shinsuke Nakamura. The number one contender still technically for the NXT Championship despite losing to Grayson Waller, but tonight he leads an undermanned team, and they'll send in the show off Dolph Ziggler first. Seems like a no-brainer to me, but let's let the war games begin. Another day, another war games, and we open up with Waller and Ziggler, and Grayson Waller already flying off of anything he can, trying to get that viral moment. And now look at this, he's going to town on Ziggler. And now look at this, now oh, he sends him all the way down, famous sir from Ziggler, but no way, Waller rolling around, up on the top rope he goes, sends out Ziggler, here we go, a little clothesline from the top, and now it seems like they only have two people in these cages, it seems like they, that Rick Boogs is all the way out of here, and look at this, a sleeper hold from Waller, he could make him pass out early in this match, but no, Ziggler, he's able to get out of it, but no wait, sends him off Does Waller, sending him into the other ring, dropping an elbow on him, and now up on the ropes again, looking to dive off of anything, and everything now here we go got him oh on the ropes with a stunner a springboard stunner and now here we go on the middle rope look at the hard away that elbow drop he's going between the legs for that one and we're gonna get our next entry and per the advantage ladder match here comes elton prince pretty phenomenal was able to win with grayson waller winning the advantage match this was this was the advantage match that actually happened but elton prince looking to grab some weapons no, he's too good for that. He's too cool for all that, boo. Oh wait, but Prince, I mean he said that Ziggler would fit really well with Pretty Deadly and he looks like he's trying to convince him of something here? What's going on here? Elton Prince, no, and Ziggler, defiant as ever, drop kicks to Elton Prince and now he's got him in the corner here. Look at this, and now boom, drop kick right to Prince and now jumping for that unprettier. And now it's a two-on-one advantage for Pretty Phenomenal. Dolph Ziggler, maybe he should have sided with Pretty Deadly. Maybe this would have been better for him if he did. Look at these knees in the corner. But wait, Ziggler sends Waller to the other ring, but a chop block. But Dolph Ziggler trying. He's trying as, almost as much as he can to do to catch this two-on-one. But no. And now look at this. Roll through. Stunner as Prince was dancing. And now he's got him in, in the middle section. But no, Ziggler fighting off anybody that he can. But Prince knocks him down. But wait, we're going to get our next entry in this match. Already the second person for Team Nakamura, German Suplex, and here comes his NXT Tag Team Champion partner, Robert Roode, but that means Nakamura is the only one left on their team. But Robert Roode, he's looking to grab some weapons, Elton Prince didn't, he's got a chair. And now the NXT Tag Team Champions will be in the ring at the same time. And now Robert Roode, he's grabbing some tables, he's feeling frisky, he got two tables in there, when did that happen? And now Elton Prince and Dolph Ziggler going at it, but wait. Rude and Ziggler taking it to Elton Prince. This is not where Elton wants to be. Look at this. Nope. Ziggler. Ziggler, what? What are you doing? He's on the opposite side of Robert Rude with Elton Prince. No super kick. He suckered him in. Super kick. And a glorious DDT. And now it's two on two, but I have to applaud the strategics of Shinsuke Nakamura's team because the tag champions are in there with not a tag team, but he was trying to steal a super kick, but Ziggler hits it anyway. 
But like I said, the tag team champions are in there against two people who aren't the tag team. So I have to applaud the strategy here from Team Nakamura. Maybe that was just on accident, though, because Rick Boogs isn't here. So who even knows? German suplex Elton Prince. And Elton, he's trying to get out of here. But Robert Roode, they're going to join him. We're going to get our next entrant. Elton Prince and Robert Roode are both up there. And Kit Wilson is the next one in the match. Kit Wilson scurrying his way in here. And he, his partner's up on the top of the cage. He's running as fast as he can to get in there. And now look at this. Kit Wilson trying to get him to stop. Trying to get Roode to stop. But he sends Prince onto his own partner off the cage. And Nakamura is the last one left for his team with AJ Styles as well. It's three on two right now. It, it's gonna be a disadvantage the entire time the Unprettier again. But look at this, spinning Uranagi. And now, look at, they're pretty deadly going after Dolph Ziggler in both rings. And now, this is just, this is just a mugging. Pretty deadly attacking Robert Roode now. And now Waller and Ziggler going at it, but Roode's trying his best to fight out of it. Dolph Ziggler in the other ring. We're gonna get Shinsuke Nakamura, the final member of Team Nakamura, is now in the match, making it three on three. The only, the only, the last advantage, I mean, the last time it will be evened up. Robert Roode's diving, and Nakamura is gonna grab some weapons. He's got a stop sign. He's gonna need all the weapons he can in this match to make up for the advantage. And look at this sledgehammer. And now, what more can he grab? A kendo stick. Nakamura trying to find anything he can under the ring. And now he's in. Keen Kinshasa to Kit Wilson, Kinshasa to Grayson Waller, Kinshasa to Elton Prince at the party. He's going back to him, the back to Pretty Deadly. And now him and Waller are going out of here. Couldn't get the Kinshasa, went for a kick there. And now Waller, no, back and forth, these two go. Oh, ducked under the kick, but got caught there. And now look at this, the boot right to the side of the head of Grayson Waller. These two had a couple matches before. And now, no, wait, Waller gets out of it. No, roll through, catching him with these elbows. No, catching back and forth, these two go, went for the chop, Kinshasa, no, he missed. Now he caught him there again. Now he hits the Kinshasa. No, no, oh, that amount of time has let Pretty Deadly get back up to their feet. And look at spilled milk on Nakamura. And now they got tables. They got tables. Kit Wilson's up on a, a top rope. Nakamura's on the table. And Pretty Deadly puts Nakamura through a table. And they're dancing as their final member will be in the match. And here comes the NXT champion, AJ Styles. A four on three advantage. But it doesn't start. To four on four? I don't know how that's gonna be, but AJ Styles is gonna grab tables in the meantime. I don't know how this is gonna be. He's got more tables. I don't know how this is gonna be refereed. Are we gonna start the match? What's going on here? But he grabs his two tables, and I look at AJ Styles across one ring. Looking at him from the other is Dolph Ziggler. These two had some battles before. And I look at this. AJ and Ziggler, opposite rings. Oh, double springboard, phenomenal forearm. And now look at this, pretty deadly going after Dolph Ziggler. There's nobody left in that cage for Team Nakamura. But the countdown is starting and there's nobody. There's nobody and all four members are pretty phenomenal are there. There's nobody on their team, I think what it could you gotta no there's not a single way Adam Cole is here it wouldn't be NXT war games without a little bit of undisputed the first forbidden door has been opened in this series and oh my god Adam Cole is here and he's the fourth member of Team Nakamura and he's in the ring Let the war games begin! I can't believe my eyes Adam Cole is here AJ Styles trying to too sweet him he's trying to too sweet him but no baby big knee to the face Adam Cole and now he's got Waller on the middle area there look at this got him up against the rope big chop from Adam Cole. And now here we go, Mr. NXT himself once dubbed that. And now here we go. Oh no, on the middle section. DDT to Waller, he's out cold. And now wait, no, he's got him. Kick to the knee. Oh, here we go. He's calling for the Panama Sunrise on Grayson Waller. And now he's got Kit Wilson for the last shots. And now wait a minute, running at Elton Prince in the other ring for the last shot. But no, he. Oh, Nakamura wants a little bit of piece of AJ. He wants him a piece of AJ Styles. And Adam Cole is going to let it happen. 
Kinshasa incoming. No, AJ moved. AJ moved. And Adam Cole got hit with the Kinshasa. Phenomenal forearm to Nakamura. And a pretty deadly, pretty deadly of the Dirty Dogs. Puts Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler through perspective tables. Oh, no. And a look at Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller going up to the top. Adam Cole's out on his feet from that Kinshasa. Waller's on the top of the cage. Adam Cole's on the table. Waller, what are you doing? Styles put him there. Grayson Waller looking for that viral moment from the top of the cage. Oh, my God. Waller, are you crazy, man? And he gets the pin for his team. Team Pretty Phenomenal wins war games. AJ Styles, Pretty Deadly, and the man who secured the win, Grayson Waller, have toppled Team Nakamura despite the last minute entry from Adam Cole. What does this mean for the tag team champions? What does this mean for Nakamura? What does this mean for Waller and Styles' friendship as Waller got the pin here? So many questions to be answered, but you'll have to see next time. Thank you all for coming out. This has been a ride.